Pete with GZI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. And the screen's on this side. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm in West Virginia uh, at uh, Jeff's house. And for those of you at shop at GCITurfacademy.com, if you send an email in and you ask a question, Jeff is the man who typically answers that. And uh, very thankful uh, for everything he's done for GCI and helping out uh, on that end of things. And we got a couple of new product launches. Uh, spray Buddy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix him up with a Spray Buddy uh, system. That'll have been a different video. And today, uh, in this video, we're gonna mount the GCI Clean pressure washer kit system. Um, he's got a steel RB400 over there, really big uh, pressure washer and tons of power, but it's a little bit uh, bulky to move around the house and all that and Jeff uh, recently has had a, a few things uh, health issue related and his back has been giving him trouble he had a, a pretty major surgery and really hadn't recovered a hundred percent so he's to the point where it's kind of difficult for him to drag the, the thing around the pressure washer so we're gonna mount it right here on the wall make it all nice and easy and simple for him so all he has is a hose to drag out. So we'll go step by step through the mounting process and then we'll hook it up, spray a little water and call it a day. So the pressure washer kit comes in two boxes. One will be the actual pressure washer, which is the active 2.0. And then in the second box will be your hose reel, the shelf hose reel mount, hose, you do have an option for a 75 foot hose or 50 foot hose. That's your choice which one you want. The first, uh, first hundred of these that sell get a free bottle of foamer. That's yours. Uh, all your parts will be in here. Again, this is a full complete kit. You don't need anything else. This is a turnkey system. So it's got the, the spray wands, the uh, spray gun, the um, Everything's quick disconnect. Of course, the hose reel, Pan A hose reel is down in here. You will have a bag of hardware. And of course, the star of the show is the actual uh, shelf itself. We supply some matting. Uh, that way, it, your pressure washer sits on a soft surface. Uh, then, of course, the hose reel mount itself. So, the uh, spacer brackets uh, for the hose reel mount will come assembled, pre-assembled, but they probably won't be squared up. So I want you to loosen these bolts right here and I want you to make sure that's squared up right there because this pressure washer shelf and hose reel is modular. I mean, you can take it off the wall, move it somewhere else if you need to. All you need is extra spacers. So make sure this is all squared up uh, before you actually mount it. All right, so you're gonna have eight of these lag screws and obviously you want to mount this on uh, your studs in your wall. You see right here we've already marked where the studs are. Uh, it should be 16 inches on center. So this is a pretty important step. We're gonna mount the hose reel in a comfortable position for the for the end user. That You don't want to put the hose reel in a spot where it's hard to get to. The hose reel goes under the pressure washer. Okay. So the pressure washer will be sitting right about here. Yeah. I think and that's a good height there. You like that height? Yeah. I want you to start in the top right. Okay. Go and put your uh, lag bolt in there. Use your new impact. Come right here. You're gonna get it just tight enough to where it'll hold on the wall by itself. Level it up. Then you come back and put the other three uh, lag screws in. Now don't put the smack down on it. You just want them tight. That's all you, you don't wanna over tighten them. Now I'll come back with a half inch uh, wrench or socket and you want to remove the four nuts so that the plate comes off. Okay. 
And you see your spacer brackets or mounting brackets stay on the wall. So now take your uh, hose reel mount plate and you'll have four carriage bolts with a washer and nylon nut. And by the way, all the hardware is stainless steel, except for the, uh, the lag bolts are not. You want to use the four inside squares. So you just hold it up, slide those under there. Now I have found that if you take a piece of tape and just tape them to the back side, that's a heck of a lot easier than trying to do it this way. But I want to show you the hardest way of doing it and show you that it's still super easy. That makes sense. So now I've got my four bolts in. I'm going to twist them so that the square head pops up into the square on the mount plate. Then I'm going to come right here and put my hose reel on. You can go ahead and take the hardware package of the hose reel. We're going to take that off. We'll use that later. And then a washer goes on first on each bolt. And then put your, put your nylon nut on next. Be sure and use a socket and a ratchet for this. That's going to be what works the easiest. Now don't tighten them down all the way. You want to get all four just barely snug because you want to center the hose reel onto the hose reel mount plate. So once you get the hose reel centered on the hose reel mount plate, then you go on and tighten them down pretty good. So do not put the pressure washer hose on the reel yet. Do that later. Make this job an easy install, so don't, don't wear yourself out. It's heavier if you pre-install the hose. Basically, you're going to come right here, hang it right up on the wall. Make sure you put a little pressure on it. Hold it up there. Take your 4 or 5 sixteenths stainless steel nylon insert nuts put this back on. When you tighten this up on the wall, please use a ratchet. Don't use an impact because uh, I don't want you to pull the PIM studs out. If you pull them out, then you have to buy a whole another bracket, okay? That's not covered under warranty. Right here. Tighten them up until they're snug. That's it. All you want is flush. Don't, do not over tighten these. So once you get that part done, then we're going to take the actual shelf itself and hold it up here and you'll get a good idea of where it needs to go. Make sure the spacer plates on the shelf, make sure you do those the same way. Kind of undo the nut, make sure they're nice and squared up and then tighten them back down. It sits right on top of the hose reel mount plate, just like that. And you're going to line up your anchor bolt holes with the uh, lag bolts that you put in previously. Take you another uh, lag bolt and go and install. Again, don't go crazy with this and tighten them down too much. We can go. And I have found this works a little bit better if you have an extension and this is a very uh, unique uh, head on this lag bolt, and we do supply the bit for it, so do not lose this bit. So after that's done, uh, you take this uh, uh, matting right here, and you're just gonna center it up. You have a little bit of shelf showing all the way around the outer edge, but you want to get it centered up, get a good idea of where it's going to go and take it back off and peel away this two-sided tape right here, like that right there. And then you're going to put it back on there centered up 
Okay, be, be pretty peculiar about this, uh, this, this part. I found that you do the front edge first, get that on, and then you just kind of push back to get the back edge. Because you don't want it, you don't want to tape it down and leave a bubble in it. You want to kind of roll it out flat as you're taping it down. That's pretty sexy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I like this. One sweet so Yeah. So the mountain the hose is pretty easy. I like to unwind it, just kind of lay it out in the floor in the garage, flatten it out. Uh, that way it rolls up a lot easier. Seven eighths wrench and put you a little bit of Loctite, uh, semi-permanent Loctite uh, on the threads and then screw it to the, the inlet on the hose reel and then tighten it down. And I just wind up your hose right here, keeping it nice and neat and tight. You're gonna get some of this, this kinking right here, but once you get it wound up, all that goes away. Now, once you get your hose reeled up, here's one of the most awesomest features about this, is you keep going all the way around, and then you go up under the belly of the, the shelf itself, and then you can go ahead and mount your hose up under there, that way it's kind of neat and tucked away up under there out of the way and it's not hanging here dangling and that kind of thing. Now I would like to make mention right quick. Uh, when you go to use your pressure washer, the first thing you do every single time is you take your gun out, you take your hose off, and you go ahead and connect that first before you turn your water on. Because if you have this connected up under here and you turn your water on, you're gonna get a bath. Now let's go ahead and get our jumper hose installed. There is a little plastic uh, protector down in the threads right here. You may have to dig it out with a pocket knife or something. You'll have two ends. One end uh, is M22 and a quick disconnect with an elbow and the other end is a uh, 3 8 by half uh, reducer and that's the end that you'll screw into the actual hose reel itself. Be sure and put you a little bit more Loctite on here. And this uses the same uh, 7 8 wrench but still get it started hand tight first. Thread it as far as you can with your fingers. We don't want you cross threading it. And then you can tighten it down with uh, your 7 8 Now I have found with this particular setup, I've been using hand A reels for 20 years. I've never broken one of these knuckles, this swivel knuckle over here on the side. But I just feel like if you torque it the wrong way, you might get jack it up a little bit. So always start here with your tightening and tighten towards the reel instead of out here and pulling towards you. I just feel like that's better because you're, it's more of a 90 degree angle that you're, you're tightening against. It just seems to work the best. Well, I've been doing it for 20 years and it's worked great for me. Now you'll take your jumper hose and we uh, supply these little stainless steel clamps. This goes around the jumper hose like that. And then you'll take your washer and your nut and go back up under here and go and put that on. The stud is already in the metal so you don't have a bolt sticking out the side of the, the pressure washer shelf right there. That stuff drives me crazy. This is a little bit tricky to get installed but once you install it, it's there and it's a done deal. Do not tighten it all the way yet. Just get it, get it on there finger tight. The reason for that is you need to be able to slide this hose through a little bit. Like so, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's put the pressure washer on. So next you want to put your pressure washer up on the shelf and uh, 
I think I've seen folks shorten the cord up and plug it to an outlet nearby. I'm not going to tell you to shorten anything. You plug it up right here with this and you can hide the excess cord back behind it back there. Take your uh, M22 loose from the quick disconnect. Go ahead and screw that on. I, here's why I didn't want you to tighten this up because you are going to have to twist this a little bit. And uh, the end right here does have a swivel on it because you want it to go in straight, dead straight. You don't want it to go in at an angle and kind of be, you know, cocked over to the side. So we're just going to do a little bit of minor adjustment right here and push that through, pull that down, push that through, pull that down, twist it so that it lines up pretty straight and come straight up and hook it in just like that. That's how it should look. It should go from the inlet side of the pressure washer and run straight up the wall, right up the inside of the, the pressure washer shelf, go through the clamp, and then come straight up and connect right here to the pressure washer. Now you can tighten that clamp down. Again, don't put the smack down on this. Just good and snug, that's all. We're not building Fort Knox here. <laughs> We're just mounting a pressure washer on the wall, that's it. Once you do that, take uh, the supplied quick disconnect, come over here on the inlet side. This is where your hose pipe will actually hook to. And that way you have a quick disconnect option just to pop it right on and pop it right off. Now, so the one at my house, I actually have an elbow coming off here and then a hose going down to my water filter system uh, that, that filters the water before it goes into the pressure washer when I wash my car and my truck. And then I also have a spigot in my garage mounted down on the wall. So from here to the water source, that's up to you. You figure that out, you do it however you wanna do it. Uh, my buddy Mike is getting one and he's actually coming from the, the ceiling and running his water line up top and coming straight down. Uh, so you, you, you handle that, but I will supply you with the quick disconnects to make it easy to hook and unhook. So if you're an organizational nut, you're going to love it. Uh, anybody can go buy a shelf. You can go to Walmart and buy a shelf, hang it on the wall, stick a pressure washer on it, and you have a pressure washer shelf. Well, this is very unique because it keeps all of your stuff highly organized under the shelf. Uh, there's a row of quick disconnects up under there. There are five quarter inch and one three eighths inch. The three eighths inch is designed to work with the gun. And then of course there's a male three eighths inch up under there. That's the one that your hose hooks to. And then I have five quarter inch. That's what most of the time your nozzles and your wands and things like that are all quarter inch. So let's, let's get this thing all lined up under here and see what it looks like. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's hot, ain't it? That is hot. That's like, that's like him. Shh. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. That is as tight as it gets when it comes to a pressure washer shelf. So you can put, uh, I've got uh, actually another, a different nozzle. What's the nozzle that kind of spins? Yeah, that, what, that, uh, whatever that thing. Like a rotating clean. Yeah, it's yeah. like really yeah. cleans. I've got one of those on mine. And then I uh, can't remember what I got on the other one, but all my stuff is nice and yeah. neat. And you know and where it's at. I mean, that's, that's a bomb. Right? I'm so proud of that right yeah. there. That is absolutely one of the, next to the spray buddy, I think that's probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life as far as the design. And especially, like you said, for the organizational type person. And you know, Probably yeah. most of your yard care people yeah. are that way. Yeah, if you're a neat freak yeah. Yeah. and you like things in place, yeah. there. There, your gun has a home, your nozzle, has, oh, and the nozzle that comes with the kit is a 4.5 T-Jet. Uh, I like the T-Jet, and this is not a T-Jet nozzle like you spray grass with. This is a pressure washer T-Jet nozzle. And of course, that's the Mosmatic uh, uh, guard for it. 
So that, that actually comes with the kit. And then of course the kit comes with the short 20 inch wand and the kit comes with the SGS 28. Now if you have a pressure washer and a reel already, uh, the shelves will be for sale individually. Uh, the hose reel and hose reel mount will be for sale individually. The hose, re hose itself will be for sale individually. And of course we got the pressure washers individually. Uh, I wanted to offer them individually because you may already have a pressure washer and you just might think that's the coolest shelf in the whole wide world. I think it is. <laughs> you might just want the shelf. So uh, we'll, we'll pot them out like, like that. The active comes with like a, a few nozzles and they actually pop in right there. Now this thing is torquey. Okay, it's got a lot of torque to it. That is one reason, that is the reason that we use this clamp to help hold it in. So don't be surprised when you're using it, if it torques a little bit and twists a little bit and when you get done washing your car, you have to come back over here and neaten it up. That's why we added this protection right here to the shelf. It kind of gives it a little bit of bite and minimizes that torque, but know that it's going to happen. I've washed my truck 20 times with it. And every time I just come over here when I'm done and just kind of straighten it back out and it's a done deal. So last but not least, you're gonna mount your foam cannon holder on the side of your shelf, yes. Foam cannon holder, keep it right here all together. Now, I do want to make note that the, the folks we're having manufacture these uh, ran out of powder coat. So this is not the actual color of the, the pressure washer mount itself, but these are supposed to be done any day now. The one you get, the foam cannon holder, will be the same color as the mount and be powder coated. I'll go over the material here in a minute. Uh, but I just had to throw some spray paint on it for this video. But basically that just comes over here on the side, hold it up there, put the two washers on, and then come back and put your, your nut on. You'll need a 7 16 ratchet and socket to tighten these down, or you can use a wrench if you want to. And again, please do not put the smack down on this. It's holding a foam cannon. That's all. So I've got all different kind of foam cannons and uh, I made this opening right here five and a half inches so that it would fit any and all of them. So pretty much any foam cannon on the market, the holder will fit and you take and measure the bottom. The bottom is typically the widest on the round foam cannons. As long as it's five and a half inches or less, uh, in width or diameter, then it'll fit in there just fine like that. Now we do supply uh, the kit with a very nice little GCI clean sticker. We don't put it on uh, before it ships. We leave it off because some people may not want a, a branded GCI mount, uh, pressure washer mount. So we'll leave that up to you. Where it would go is dead center right here uh, on this forward facing uh, lip so i haven't got this memorized yet so i'm going to read it word for word but the uh construction of it it's 1018 cold rolled steel it goes through an inline five stage wash that's a zinc rich primer tested for a thousand hours salt spray secured to 75 percent then top coated with an exterior grade powder then sent to a 450 degree oven for the final cure so it is a uh, cold rolled steel and it is uh, primered and it is powder coated. So it will last you forever, I reckon. Doesn't, doesn't powder coat last forever when it's hanging on the wall? Yeah. So really uh, high quality, uh, premium pressure washer setup. You know, I don't, I don't do junk. Y'all you know, know I don't, I don't I'm, a, I'm buy once, cry once kind of guy. And when I make something or create something or invent something, I, I, I kind of follow that same uh, thought process. So it's, it's an absolutely top of the line, the highest quality you can possibly get, and it will, it will last you for years. Yeah, everything's stainless steel. Uh, all the hardware is stainless steel. Of course, all the quick disconnects are stainless steel. 
the 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 wand that comes with it sta everything's stainless on it the only thing that's not stainless steel is the lag bolts that go into the wall uh, those are more uh, wood grade style so now all you do is uh put your water now all you do is connect your water hose to here plug the thing up uh the power button's right up here turn it on and uh you're ready to start pressure washing so i think jeff has decided he's going to um go inside his wall and put him a little water spigot down here that way uh, he can hard pipe it with is it pex or something like that and uh that way everything's nice and clean but right now we've got his water hose hooked up Power's on and it's going to start off like that you want to bleed the air out of the line so unhook your uh locking uh tab over there pull it out pull the trigger Once you get the air bled out of the line, then you're ready to go. Clip in my wand here. My nozzle. So plenty of volume and plenty of pressure. It's 1800 PSI, it should be around two gallon per minute. That's pretty good right there. Perfect for washing cars. <laughs> I, I think this nozzle, uh, this pressure washer, uh, this hose, I, for me personally, it's, my, it's a perfect setup for washing vehicles. And of course, you can nozzle down a little bit mm -hmm. and pressure wash yeah. home houses, you know, stuff like that. But uh, where well, you got 75 foot hose, so you can go all the way half around the house that way, do cleaning the siding and then go back around this way. So uh, I think you'll get a lot of good use out of it. So what I'm gonna do first before I put it up is turn my water supply off. Then I'll turn the power to the pressure washer off. Take my tip off. Basically go over there, pull the trigger and drain the, the excess pressure out. Then I hang up all my accessories, hang up my gun here, and wind up my hose. Don't forget, when you wind this up, you can hook your hose up under here. Hook your hose under the shelf and lock it. One of the downfalls of using a pressure washer in the garage is when you're unhooking everything, you get a little bit of water here and there. So broom it out blow it out yeah. sweep it out whatever so there you go it's a gci clean pressure washer kit again you get the whole kit or things are individual i'll link everything up in the description below as always i appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch i'll check you later